The Avogadro constant and the mole. So the def definition of a mole, one mole, which we use the symbol MOL, of a substance contains 6.0221419 times 10 to the power of 23. The only one we're gonna worry about when we're doing our calculations is just gonna be 6.02. Don't worry about that part. So 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. And it represents how many particles in a substance. Okay. But now, that number is really large. Okay. So we don't really use that when, when really describing a lot of things. Right? And I'm going to show you in, in a sec what that means and you know, how we try to simplify it. This value is called the Avogadro constant. We're going to use the letter N, subscript A, capital A. Okay, so the mole is defined as the amount of substance that contains as many elementary entities, so atoms, molecules, formula units. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what a formula units are in just a second. As exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. Remember we talked way back about how a lot of the calculations are all based on the isotope of carbon. Okay, so as we said, remember that pretty much the masses okay, that we've calculated when we looked at the different types of isotopes for each, um, each atom, they were all related to that of carbon, okay, carbon-12 specifically. So what does this all mean, okay? So if we have one mole of carbon, we have 6.02 times 10 to the power of three atoms of just carbon. But if we're looking at one mole of sodium chloride, we have 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 formula units of sodium chloride. And here's that so the, uh, the, the, uh, the form, formula units that we're talking about. When we're looking at something that is ionic, okay, ionic meaning metal, non-metal, we never really have one molecule of NaCl. What we have is because they both carry charges, we have pretty much a string of NaCl. Okay. And then I connect it to this Na is Cl, NaCl, Na. Okay. And there's that connection between. So when we're talking about sodium chloride, we never really look at it as one molecule of sodium chloride, we look at it as, at it as formula units. Okay. Now, if we're looking at it in terms of a molecule, so one mole of hydrofluoric acid is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules of a, uh, HF. So if we're talking about one mole of water, let's say, as another example, okay. so one mole of water, okay, water being an actual compound, an actual molecule, we're looking at it having 6.0 times 2, times 10, sorry, to the power of 23 molecules. Okay. Mm -hmm. That big. 6.0 times 10 to the power of 23. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you're if you're looking at a you know um, let's say a, a whole piece of gold let's say you know a bar of gold within that you're gonna have so many it all depends on how many um, let's say atoms of gold is let's say within that that piece that you have right so we we look at it as something very very small in order to be able to fit so many. Any type of item that you have that you're going to see, you know, but so a number like this is just really not feasible to talk about, right? We're not going to come around and go, well, I've got, uh, you know, you know, 6.02 times 10 to the power of something, you know, atoms within this bar of gold. Or in this glass of water, I've got 6.02 times 10 to the power of. So what we use is we use a smaller unit called a mole to kind of explain how many of these particles we actually have in our confined space. So, how many atoms are in two moles of aluminum? Okay. So, we know that in, uh, so we have two moles 
of aluminum. We know that one mole of aluminum, one mole has how many? How many atoms? Six. So 0 0.02 times 10. 23. Good. So we have one mole has this many, but we're talking about atoms, and we're looking at one atom, right? Which atom is it? Aluminum. So now. This, we can rewrite it as, well, we have 6.02, oh, sorry, atoms. So in other words, we can rewrite this as 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms per one mole. Or we can look at it as one mole okay, has 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. So we can look at it as one of these two ways. Now, if we start off with this, which one of these two, and they're both the same, they're just inverted. Which one of these two can I use that will allow me, well, I start off with two moles. I want to cancel out two moles. And remember when we were talking about conversions way back last year, we were talking about what can I multiply that will allow me so where can I where will moles be put? Top or bottom to cancel out? Bottom, right? So which one of these? First or second? First one, right? Because moles are here at the bottom. So in one mole, it's equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. So now moles cancel out. So mole, mole. What am I left with? What units am I left with? Atoms, right? So, to do that, now I just multiply 6.02 times 10 to the power of 3 times 2. So I could do that, it, you know, we can do that all si a lot simpler than I did it there, okay? But the reason why I'm showing it to you this way is because this way, okay, if you understand the concept of canceling out units, okay, it'll help you figure out what step to go. Am I going to multiply? Am I going to divide? Right? This way, you don't have to worry about it. This way, you can just follow along as we're multiplying by a set of fractions. And then figuring out which order will our set of fractions be. So when we multiply 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, what do we get? Is it okay if we got another like, number? Yeah, well, because that's... Because we're really, we're multiplying that whole, this thing really twice by 2. 1.204 times 10 to the power of 24. And so that represents how much, what, what units, though? Atoms. Atoms. So in two moles of aluminum, so if we had aluminum, okay, and we were trying to isolate two moles of it, we would have an equivalent of this many atoms. But now, what are the least number of significant digits in my question? One significant digit. So, this is the one we need. So my answer is 1 times 10 to the power of 24 atoms. Okay. So, we haven't talked about significant digits in a while. Please make sure you remember them. Oh. Exactly. Exactly. Why do you have to use the word mole? <laughs> because we don't want to use 6.02 times. No, why, why do you use the word more? Mm -hmm. It's like, I think, what was the question? And it's in oh, because well, have you seen the worksheet that I had? I posted? You'll see a mole in, in it. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a little more about that later. Now, converting moles to number of particles. What we've done, what we've done is we take the number of moles, right? Like we had in that example, two moles. And all we did was multiply it by 6.02 times 10. Sorry, six, yeah, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 to get the number of particles. Now, we were looking at atoms. Okay, If we were looking at it in terms of molecules, one molecule okay, is, it, it has a, is you know, equivalent to, let's say, that many. So, sorry, one mole is equivalent to that many molecules. Okay, So we're using it to pretty much count atoms. So we're counting atoms, molecules, formula.